Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Galatians chapter 5. Make sure everything's on the floor. Uh, Galatians chapter 6. Excuse me. Brethren, say people, if a man be overtaken in a fault, done something wrong. Matthew 18, 15. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, and verse 15. Ye which are spiritual, <laughs> restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So, listen, somebody's done wrong, they've gotten right, bring them back. You know, don't hold grudges, don't hold envy in. Take him back. That guy in the Corinthian church that, you know, the fornication with his, his father's wife, he got corrected. He got right. Second Corinthians. He says, "Bring them back. Don't hold grudges. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ." Oh boy, look at that. The law of Christ, not the Old Testament law. You want to do a law? Help everyone with their burdens. Help them with their 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 great weight issues. Take care of them. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. He's self-deceived. Oh, I'm, you know, look who I am. Really? You can have all the initials after your name and still be an idiot. Matter of fact, there are some people get get diplomas and their honorary degrees. They didn't earn them. Don't think too high of yourself. Help others get out of pride and proudness. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Okay, work. We're not talking about the works of the law. We're talking about works after salvation. Realize where you are. Is that the will of God? Is it proved of God? Is that what God wants you to do? For every man shall bear his own burden. Now you think verse 2 and 5. Our contradictions, the Bible needs to be thrown out. No, you help others. But in reality, when it comes to your work with God, only you can carry that. You cannot go into someone else's ministry and copy what they're doing. You cannot do something that somebody else is doing and copy that. No, you've got something specific that God has for you to do. Study that work. Prove that work that God's got you. And then with that work, there are burdens that you alone can carry and no one else. But in the realm of Christianity and brethren, help those that are in burdens. So it's not a contradiction. It's just how, in which way you look at it. Let him that is taught in the word communicate with him that teaches in all good things. So, the teacher and the student, and the student and the teacher. In the Word of God, what is correct and what's right, and five chapters is not the law. You know, find out what's right. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Get it right, know it's right, prove it. Be not deceived. Okay? Well, verse 6, be not deceived in your teaching. 
Verse 6, be not deceived. You've already been deceived. You've been deceived by someone to think that <coughs> freedom from bondage. Be not deceived in your own teaching. God is not mocked, made fun of, reproached. For whatsoever a man soweth, that what he plants, that what he builds, that what he makes, that what he starts, that shall he also reap. Now, you know, one of the causes, one of the causes, one of the causes of suicide is the ships start coming in. The tractor trailers start coming in. The load starts coming of what you've done through your life. And it's a heavy burden. It's a heavy load. You didn't realize that as you get on in age, you're going to have to carry some of those things you've done as youth. Uh, what you sow, and this is an illustration I've always used. You chop off your arm. Well, that's it. You're going to, have to go through life with no arm. That's what you sold. You partied, hardied all your life, drinking, smoking, and all that. Don't be surprised if cancer, bad liver, cirrhosis, kidney problems. You mess around with the wrong women. Don't be surprised if VD. God is not marked. He's already said the wages of sin is death. He's already told us not what to do. He told Adam, said, do not eat that fruit. Adam ate that fruit and look what has been reaping. You know what's been reaping by Adam taking that fruit he wasn't supposed to? Hospitals, police, death. God's already told us how to live and what to do. Don't go to God and say, oh God, why did this happen? 95% chance is something that you have done yourself. Now the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the love of God, he might help us to get through what we got ourselves into a mess, but don't blame God. Just watch. For be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man, whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall, uh, yeah, shall of the flesh reap corruption, diseases, falling apart, ailments, troubles, problems, death. Wages of sin is death. You go to that flesh. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And a lot of the rewards of the Spirit you will not see on earth. You'll see some blessings, but not all. Through the Holy Spirit, we are uh, inheritance in the millennium. Through the Holy Spirit, crowns and rewards for eternity. And we may get some of the rewards here, but we're not promised. Look at the life of Paul. And yet, one of the things that we can read, found in verse 22 in the previous chapter, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And the problem with many people is you can't take that through the bank. The bank won't take that. But God will. And that's given by God. And let us not be weary, tired, long, you know, dreading, in well-doing. Do good. Don't be weary in that. Don't give up. Keep doing what God wants you to do. There is a reward, though you may not see it on planet Earth. For in due season, we shall reap rewards if you're in the Spirit. If we faint not. So what happens? I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I do what God tells me to do. Whatever ministry involved with lost people. Whatever God has to me to do to lift up Christians to do right. I pray. Whatever you do. Whatever it is. Whatever you are doing. You, you know that God has you to do that in your life. And you're doing it. And you're a sinner. You put under the blood. And you know you say... 
This is long. This is it's not worth it. I'm quitting. I'm giving up. I'm going back, or I'm just not, I'm just gonna sit down. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna I'm not doing nothing else. Then you won't reap that which is good. You're gonna reap loss for quitting. Demas is gonna suffer loss. Mark had a loss for whatever reason he went back but later on we find it in his life through paul he has grown he has well done himself he will get rewards you don't have to quit forever get back in the in the in the plow get back to seeds get back to doing what god wants you to do don't think your life is over if you've taken a rest get going get moving as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men, all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. All right, all men, including more so than those that are saved. Do good, don't do bad. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. All right, six chapters, not very large. Now, some will say again, this is where Paul's eyesight, he wrote big letters. Do I know that? No. What's he mean by large letter? I don't know. Maybe he did write in big letters. Maybe there's more to this letter that the Holy Spirit cut out. Ever think about that? I don't know. Maybe Paul thought this letter was lengthy, too, too long. I can only throw simulations and, and assumptions at you. I don't know. He said, Lord, we'll get to know one day, maybe. As many as desire to make a fair show of the flesh, look at me, look who I am. They constrain you to be circumcised. There it is again. We're closing this letter and we're back to circumcision again. They are adapting to the Jews. Only least they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So, okay, here's what's going on now. If I get circumcised, I'm not going to be persecuted. Uh, that's weird. They're being persecuted for the cross of Christ, but... Becoming circumcised like the Jews, lost Jews, you want to be the saved Jews, we'll leave you alone. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law. Okay, those are the Jews. Those are the unsaved Jews that are relying on the law who can't keep the law, trying to get you in the law, trying to get you to be circumcised. They're not doing it themselves. But desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm not even going to touch that. We've already seen five chapters, six chapters. The law of circumcision is not salvation. There's a bunch of men out there who are glorifying because they are doing this operation. No. But God forbid that I should glory. So what should I glory in? Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's glory in that because that's our salvation. Not circumcision, not the law. If there's anything I'm going to boast about for my being saved, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. By whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. So I'm supposed to be crucified too. For in Christ Jesus, let's get this, let's close this letter. Let's get it over with. Neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circ uncircumcision, but a new creature. I'm a new creature by the cross of Jesus Christ, not by an operation of man. That's it. And as many as walk according to this rule, salvation by the cross of Jesus, peace be unto them and mercy. And upon the Israel of God. Alright. 
If you're right, you got the gospel, you're saved by the cross, peace be with you. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. Well, they're giving Paul a hard time. He's right in the church saying, remember he said, have I become your enemy? Listen, right now, I'm closing this letter. I'm done. Don't you trouble me no more. Paul is fed up, angry. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse, verse chapter 12, it looks like they've given up the persecution of the Jews. They've given in. It'd be like today, if the Roman Catholic Church today says, hey, listen, you're preaching on the street. That's illegal. We're going to burn you at the stake. And they carry me to the stake and they say, listen, we won't kill you if you denounce Jesus and say that the, that the host, that's the, the Roman Catholic Mass, is the body, is the way of Jesus Christ through the Catholic Church. No, I'm not doing that. The Galatian Church says, okay, we will resist persecution by doing what you want us to do. And they're probably charging for this operation. So they're making money off the Christians. I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you know, Paul says in his body there are marks of Jesus. Do you think Paul's going to have those marks in eternity when he gets his new body? No. He was stoned. He was whipped. He was shipwrecked. And yet the Bible records to us that we will get a new body. Paul will not have those marks in New Jerusalem. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ will bear the marks for our soul through the cross. Brethren, say people, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And what's missing with this letter? This rebuke. Say hello to Aquila, say hello to this person, greet these people, the fellow, the fellow brethren, the fellow prisoners. There is none of that in this letter. He Listen, 2 Corinthians closed with a rebuke of sin. Galatians has been involved with sin from chapter 1 to chapter 6. And there's no, hey, say hi to these people, say goodbye to these people. His final words are like this, don't let them trouble me no more. And what is the whole aspect of the, of the epistle to Galatians? It's about the law. It does not save you. And the Holy Spirit thought it enough importance that there it is in the 66 books. Nothing but the cross of Jesus. The gospel is Christ died for our sins according to scripture. He was buried and he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is Christianity. The law, that's religion. Religion can't save you. Plain and simple. 